Welcome to the Financial Modeling for Tax Equity course, and in this lesson, we will introduce the objectives of the course and review the curriculum of the course. In order to understand the objectives of the course, we will start with the Renewable Energy Project. Then, we've got the sponsor who invests equity financing in the project with the hope of receiving the dividends from the project. So, the principal difference between the renewable projects in the United States and the projects located elsewhere is the availability of tax credits. Unfortunately, the sponsor cannot utilize the tax credits efficiently, as we will see later on in the course. Therefore, the sponsor invites a partner to the project who is known as a tax equity investor. The tax equity investor will provide equity financing to the project in exchange for the tax losses, tax credits, and some cash. So, having the tax equity investor complicates the transaction and financial modeling of the transaction significantly because the allocation of the tax losses and tax credits have to comply with the Internal Revenue Service requirements. So, these requirements have to be reflected in the financial model. Then, we've got a lender, who provides debt financing to the project. However, having a project-level debt financing is rare in the tax equity structures, because tax equity investor typically does not want to have a project-level debt, as it increases the project's riskiness. So, what we see in the United States, is debt financing that is raised at the level of the sponsor. And this debt financing is called a back leverage loan, and the lender is called a back leverage lender. Having a back leverage loan adds another level of complexity to the transaction. So now, we've got a tax equity investor who has a senior claim on the project's cash flows, and this affects the back leverage loan sizing. Then we've got other the stakeholders, such as the off-taker, who receives the energy from the project and pays for the energy through the PPA. Then we've got the construction firm, which builds the project during the construction period. And finally, we've got the O&M firm, which provides the O&M services to the project. So, in this course, our primary focus is the financing of the renewable energy project. We are concerned with the financing coming from the tax equity investor, and whether we have allocated the losses and tax credits to the tax equity correctly so his investment amount is sized correctly. We're also concerned with the back leverage loan, whether we have sized the loan amount correctly, and ultimately, the financing coming from the tax equity and the back leverage loan will affect the sponsor's equity return, and, therefore, the PPA price. So, what we will not do in this course is we will not model the generation, revenue, and operating costs in this course. These items will be given to us so we can work on the advanced modeling of the funding part of the project. So, if you are not familiar with financial modeling for renewable energy projects, we strongly recommend that you take a project finance modeling for renewables course where we start from scratch. We will now briefly review the content of the course. First, we will review the case study to understand the inputs to the financial model. Next, we will review the basics of project financing that many of you will already be familiar from our other courses on project finance modeling for renewable energy course. We will then model the tax credits allocation of the tax losses and tax credits, and cash distributions between partners. At this point, we will be able to size the back leverage loan because the cash flow available to the sponsor will be known. The back leverage loan size can then be used to model the construction funding. Once the back leverage loan and construction funding modeling are complete, we will turn our attention to the IRS tax rules that govern the allocations of tax items between partners. We will work on the capital accounts, deficit restoration obligation, qualified income offset, outside basis, and suspended losses. The result of implementing the tax rules in the financial model will be the adjustments that need to be made to the allocation of tax items between partners to correctly arrive at the tax equities investment size. And once we have the tax equities investment size, we will proceed with modeling the equity return of the sponsor. Since the sponsor will be raising project financing, we will also need to model the financial covenants and debt service reserve account to correctly get to the cash flow available for the distributions to the sponsor. We will then work on the model optimization and tax equity transaction structure optimization utilizing a scenario analysis tool. The objective of the optimization is to come up with such a deal structure that satisfies the sponsor, the tax equity investor, and the lender. And finally, we will work on modeling the sponsor's buyout option and the hypothetical liquidation at book value accounting. 